Welcome back to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. Today we're going to be taking a look at an audio demonstration of the Dofer A125 voltage controlled phase shifter right here in the center. Uh, if you were with us last time, we talked about basics on this module, uh, kind of went through the front panel talking about what all the jacks do. Um, talking specifically about, I'm just going to kind of discuss the controls that are going to be involved today, uh, the shift control. Uh, which actually allowed us to um, adjust manually the amount of phase shift that's being applied to the signal. Um, and then a couple down, this uh, control is going to come in a little handy in a little bit. Uh, the resonance is actually going to allow you to adjust the depth of the single can cancellation uh, overall. Uh, so what we're going to experience with that is kind of a tone control uh, here. Uh, or tone change, I guess I should say, is a little bit better. Uh, at any rate, um, I'm not going to show too much patching uh, in this segment. I just wanted to start out by saying that. If you look down at the bottom, I already have kind of a fairly complex patch down here, if you look. Um, and I didn't want to take up too much time on the demonstration going through how I built this, because it's a little bit outside of uh, the focus which I wanted to kind of focus on the A125 and what it sounds like and what it does. Um, but I will do just kind of a basic overview of what's going on down here. Um, I do have a sequencer that's off to the left that you probably can't see uh, over this way. Um, and that will become a little more important a little bit later uh, when we go into our uh, second audio demonstration. But for our first audio demonstration, uh, we're going to be using just a basic uh, waveform. Uh, right now, our A111 right here is feeding four waveforms over to the A135 right there um, in each of the inputs right there at the VCAs of our A135. Uh, and then I have a few uh, control voltage signals sort of triggering the different channels. Uh, the first one that we're going to be concerned with is actually channel 2, which is receiving a pulse wave from our friend the A111 over here. Um, I have that one. I believe it's being triggered by... yep. A143 over here on the far right. Um, on our A155, which is off camera again, it's sending gates, and uh, it's just triggering that envelope, which is going to shape our VCA here in a moment. Uh, but I did want to kind of get that set up out of the way so you understand where the sound is coming from. Uh, but just kind of look at this as one big sound. If uh, you have questions about how this was built or anything like that, uh, I'm sure one of the other videos that I have uh, will kind of shed some light on that. Uh, but for the most part, that's kind of the patch that we're going to be working with. Uh, the other thing I have that's kind of set up uh, off camera, if you look over on the side, I have an oscilloscope set up uh, ready to show us uh, on the top our original signal and on the bottom our phase signal uh, from the A125. So we want to see that as well and get some kind of uh, insight into what's going on over there. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take, if you look over here, the multiples right here, this is going to be our audio signal. So I'm going to take output of channel 2 right here from the A135, and you should immediately see over at our oscilloscope, now we have a little bit of activity, pulse wave, because this second multiple right there is going all the way over uh, to our oscilloscope. And then now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this sort of third multiple down here, and I'm going to go up to the phase shifter and feed it our dry signal. Okay, so now you kind of understand what we're actually looking at over the oscilloscope is our dry signal so far. Now we need to send the phase signal over to our oscilloscope as well. So I'm going to take it out from here and then just patch this cable in, which is going to the second input of the oscilloscope. So as soon as I patch this, we have a little bit of sound over there. And uh, you can kind of see immediately that our friend the square wave has already been transformed quite a bit um, at the second input. Now if I move my, let's start with the shift control, you should start to see the effect on the waveform. And you can see that it's kind of varying the shape quite a bit. It's not quite as squarey as it was, if that's really a word. 
And I can even get it kind of in triangle territory. Or kind of a triangle. It's a little bit rounded to be a triangle. Um, over at our 125, one thing I do want to note is right now we're only listening to the to the phased signal. So right now it's all at zero. So we're only listening to phase. We're not listening to any additional original signal, uh, except for uh, what's coming in at the A135 over there. So now let's go back to shift and kind of play with that a little bit more. And just kind of observe on our oscilloscope. So you can kind of see there's some very interesting shapes coming out of there. And right there I'm just still on shift just a little bit. Okay, now let's play with resonance a little bit. Just to kind of subdue it a little bit. Because remember, the resonance is actually going to allow us to control the depth of the signal cancellation. Because inside of here, we basically have our comb filter, which is acting on our audio in right there at the audio in jack. So let me just play with the shift a little bit more. And then we go to the second part of this demonstration. Because you should have already heard it quite a bit, as well as kind of observed uh, how it's affecting it. Okay. So that's the first part. Now I'm going to go to my oscilloscope, and I'm going to flip into a different mode over here. So let me kind of flip over there. it right up. Let me get back in there. There we go. This is the mode I wanted. Uh, so spectrum mode. Uh, this is going to allow us to see at least just a little bit, uh, a little bit of the combing effect that's actually happening inside of this module. Now I kind of played around with my settings here to get kind of an ideal uh, sort of situation here. So let me go ahead and dial that in. Whoops, hit the wrong button. Let me get back in there. There we go. All right, so I was at 10K before, so let me switch over to 10K. There we go. And then we're in linear, that's right, and then 64X, that's great. So that's the setting I was at. So now, what I'm gonna do, just so you can kind of see the comb filter sort of being applied on it, because right here it's really hard to see. Uh, let's see, channel one. It's obvious that there's more signal in channel one at the top than there is in channel two. But it's not readily apparent what's going on, and it might be, you know, just the resolution of this particular uh, oscilloscope, um, or it could just be, you know, the fact that this is a really small display, actually. So if you look at my finger, you get an idea. So we're fitting a lot of information right there. Um, but let me show you what I wanted to show you, which is this. Kind of, I'm going to go back up here to my A125, and let me bring the resonance up for this. And I'm going to just adjust the shift. And let me start it all the way over here first. Okay, right there. And now keep your eye on the oscilloscope and then kind of watch the behavior that happens with the waveform. So here we go. See how it's kind of sliding all the way across? That's the kind of comb filter moving. And if I move it faster over here on my A125, you can see the kind of little bend moving in the waveform as well, a little bit faster. If I don't move it, there's kind of no shifting there. But if I move it, we kind of get a little sort of ripple moving across there. And that's the comb filter. It's kind of sliding across the frequencies, creating those gaps in our spectrum very cool sound. I'm just going to kind of do it a few more times. Okay, so that's our basic demonstration. And now that we have that out of the way, we're going to take kind of a brief pause uh, before we go into the next segment. I think we covered just some of the basics of the audio demonstration part, you know. Uh, level, I think I, I didn't really explain it, but it's pretty straightforward. I mean, we're adjusting level going in. 
Uh, so if I want less level, I bring it down. Uh, right here, shift. Uh, that's the one we've kind of been playing with for a little while. Uh, that one again is allowing us to adjust the amount of phase shift, and then at the very uh, sort of closer to the bottom, we have our resonance control, which is allowing us to change the depth of the signal cancellation. Uh, but what we are experiencing is an actual tone color change of, in our sound. Uh, we didn't really play around with mix too much. Uh, I may go into that a little bit further, but right now I just kind of wanted you to have uh, sort of a basic idea of sonically what's going on uh, to the signal, uh, get a chance to see it, and then also just hear like a basic waveform. So please join us in the next segment. Uh, we're going to kind of do a little more advanced uh, demonstration, maybe integrate the A155 sequencer. And uh, I want to thank you for watching, of course, and uh, keep on patching out there.